Today I'm doing a short programming workshop. I'm going to show you something very common in MT4 programming, looping through a list of trades. This isn't going to be a Hello World style tutorial. It's much more effective to work through a practical example and learn by experience. So we're going to use the trade loop as the basis for a complete working EA. And I think we can build a fully working EA in about 10 minutes. I want to create the trade loop as part of a function to apply a trailing stop. I also want the function to be reusable, so I'm going to create a separate function in a file in the includes folder. MetaTrader comes with some example files already and I like to keep my work separate. So first I'm going to create a folder to store my include functions. Now create the include file using the wizard. Let's call the function apply trailing stop. It's a good idea to pass in all the required information to the function rather than relying on global information. So set the arguments to the function to include symbol, magic number, order type and trailing stop price. Magic numbers used by EAs to identify the trades created by the EA. If you enter a trade directly from the trading console, it will have a magic number of zero. So this function can be used for both manually entered and EA created trades. The first thing to do is to create the loop through all orders. Notice that I'm using I minus minus and counting down from orders total minus one. Orders total is the total number of open trades. So the first trade is at position zero and the last is at orders total minus one. Unless I have a reason to count up, this is my default approach for two reasons. First, the initialization value orders total is a function and is only evaluated once instead of being evaluated at every iteration of the loop, which would happen if I included it in the termination condition. Second, in case I'm working through a list and removing items as I go, like closing trades, I don't want to worry about adjusting my count if I remove an item and the list compresses back down. The first thing to do in the loop is to load in the trade using order select. If order select fails, this will just skip to the next trade in the list. Next, test the selected trade to see that it matches the symbol, magic number and order type passed in. For buy trades, we want the trailing stop price to be below the current price and the reverse for sell trades. So here I'm just using if statements to handle each one differently. I'm also only processing buy and sell trades. Limit and stop orders will be ignored. To decide if we should apply the trailing stop, there are three conditions to evaluate. First, if the current order stop loss is zero, then no stop loss has been applied so far, and we can apply the trailing stop here. Second, since we only want the trailing stop to move forward with the price, we check if the current stop loss is less than the trailing stop price to be set. And finally, in case we use this function to simply remove all trailing stops by setting them to zero, we include a condition to check for price equal to zero. Without this, the test would fail on the second condition. Applying the trailing stop is nothing more than updating the stop loss for the selected trade. Since nothing else is changing, I'm using the values from the selected trade in the other arguments to the order modify function. Then just copy the code for the buy trade condition and make the updates to apply the same to sell trades, changing less than price to greater than price. For sell trades, the additional conditions are not really necessary, but I leave them here because it makes the code more readable and consistent. Compile this just to make sure there are no errors. The two warnings are not important, but I like to remove warnings to keep compiler results clean. It helps with larger compiles to know that there is nothing to look for. Just add a boolean result to each order modify call and compile again. One of the inputs of the trailing stop function is a price. I'll create a very simple function to calculate a trailing price, but this could be replaced later with a more appropriate trailing stop function like lowest candle or Bollinger Band. By putting this code into a reusable function, that's the hard work done. Now create the EA, again a separate folder and using the wizard. First use an include statement to bring in the trailing stop function. Next add two inputs for the magic number and a gap from the current price to the trailing stop price. By adding comments at the input statements, the comments will appear in the input screen instead of the variable names. Now 
Now just include a call to the trailing stop function in the on tick section using the get trailing stop price function and duplicate this for the sell side. That's the complete EA. We've built a complete working EA. This EA doesn't place trades, but it can be used to monitor trades you place through the terminal or another EA and maintain a trailing stop. The trailing stop function itself is very basic and there are some programming techniques that could be improved, but this is a good starting point. If you'd like a follow-up video to answer any questions or to show some improvements to make this more useful, let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe to know when the next video comes out. Just before I finish, because this EA doesn't place trades, it can't be easily demonstrated in a backtest. Even a live demonstration would be very slow, waiting for the market to move. Instead, I'll create a script to run the trailing stop function. The script is very simple and I can just copy most of the code from the EA we just built. Now I'll pause for a while to place trades and let the market do its thing before coming back to demonstrate. Just to show how the script works, I set up two trades earlier, um, not knowing which direction the market might move, just to make sure I would get a gap. So here we can see on the pound, my sell trade has moved forward. I'm going to run the trailing stop script. See we have inputs magic number zero these were manually placed so magic number zero is correct I'm going to change the trailing existence to 0 0.002 and if you look at the moment you can see that for this cell GBP USD there is no stop loss I'm going to run the script and it's applied the stop loss to both the buy and the sell. That's everything for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, remember to leave a like and comments are always welcome. Thank you.